Well, the sluggish global economy has not left the property sector unscathed, but the high-end estate market on the Indian Ocean Island of Mauritius is showing resilience. That's with government estimating that the property sector in Mauritius will be the biggest driver of growth in 2013. Let's delve into this on the line from Mauritius. Uh, Murray Adair, the CEO at IORIC. Thank you very much for joining us, Murray. Uh, let's talk about the, 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 sec the projections for the real estate sector going forward because uh, the, the government saying it is going to be the key driver of growth uh, this year. Um, and of course, at a time when the economy overall has been under pressure. So, so what's really keeping the real estate sector on a, a booming path, some are saying? Well, certainly the, um, the, the change in uh, Mauritius, so let's say over the last 20, 30 years, is to move away from an agricultural-based economy to one that's far more service sector and real estate-based. And um, certainly, the, 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 I think the growth markets in uh, uh, real estate from Mauritius in the coming year will move away from retail, which I think has been overdone with a, a state of recent shopping centre openings, and far more of a heavy focus on uh, residential for Mauritians and for overseas owners, uh, and into new sectors like retirement, but also things like education and uh, medical. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about government initiatives there to, to attract foreigners. You've got the inter integrated uh, resort scheme where foreigners are, aren't uh, restricted to purchasing local assets in the country. Uh, has that worked? Uh, and where, where are the foreigners coming from when it comes to those who are taking advantage of this? Yeah, the, uh, the integrated resort scheme or IRS for short sure has been running now for about eight years took a, a big dive through 2009, 2010, 2011, but has actually come back very strong in the last 2012 and 2013. So the, the, the program uh, is, uh, limits the amount of property available to foreigners, but what is available comes with automatic residency. Mm -hmm. um, so it's attractive to certain uh, uh, foreign investors for that reason, because it then gives them access to the preferential tax rates in Mauritius. So today, the total IRS program has delivered around about 500 residences. Now, that's 500 residences off a total number of households in Mauritius of 360,000. So it's, it's actually a very small percentage of the total residential market. But the great thing about IRS is that um, because it's such a small number of units, uh, there's been massive growth for uh, investors who bought into the IRS program. Mm -hmm. because the fundamentally the resale market is the rest of the planet rather than just Mauritian national mm -hmm. uh, and there's a very limited supply of these residences. So of course as you said that the supply side factor is really helping to, to boost resale prices. Uh, give us an idea of the type of returns one could uh, one could see if you invested in, in the retail sector. Um, any indication of uh, the type of prices you'll also be buying into if you were a foreigner? Yeah for sure. I mean uh, I'd, uh, I'd, I'd it's said across a, a, a diagrammatic that the government has actually issued on resales uh, based against original values. And uh, unbelievably, but it's true, the, uh, the return on uh, the properties that were uh, first launched in 2006 is around about 200% uh, growth over the last six years. Um, the project that I look after is a, an IRS project uh, freehold on the ocean called Azuri. It's the, it's the fastest selling residential project in Mauritius ever. We sold 200 residences uh, in the last year. Mm -hmm. And uh, we think that uh, in terms of capital return to investors, uh, when we hand over in November this year, we think that we would have a 40% return on total investment and return on uh, equity could be in the order of 100%. Mm -hmm. So, of course, a very juicy and lucrative returns there. What about uh, building up communities and building up all the infrastructure around these residencies? Are you involved in that? For example, schools, uh, shopping centres and all the amenities that you might need? Yeah, no, absolutely. Samantha. It's absolutely key. Um, I think the, the days of just uh, uh, parachuting uh, golf resorts into various locations around the planet have gone. And I think developers now, when they approach projects, have to think about the, uh, the, the macro and, and wider economies when they're uh, developing the project. So yeah, the, 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 the project that we have at Zuri again is um, a community-based project. We've actually blended uh, the, the international residences with high-end Mauritian residences. And to support the, uh, the families that we hope uh, will be living and enjoying life at Azuri, we, uh, we are delivering uh, retail offices, a school for 900 kids, uh, elite international school, so all these things have to be brought to the mix now and you can't just uh, get away with expecting people 
to invest in the property when they're probably going to spend two to three weeks a year only. People are looking for far more out of the property these days than they did in the past. Yeah, but I mean, still Mauritius, of course, is, is predominantly a, a leisure a destination. To tell us about uh, how you're catering to, to the leisure market, the, the tourism market, especially in light of the fact that it will always be seasonal. I mean, if you look at uh, capacity rates, a hotel occupancy uh, in June in 2011, it was just under 50%, 44%. And in the peak seasons, it goes to 75, 80%. So, so how do you cater to the market and how do you adjust for, uh, for those high and low times? Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, of, all the, of all the arrivals by plane and commercials, which is about the easiest way to get here, 93% are tourists. So it's a very uh, tourist-driven uh, economy. Um, the, the, the way to kind of bridge the, the, the peaks and troughs in the market is really to identify activities in the off-peak season that can uh, really flourish in, uh, in Mauritius. So, for example, there's been initiatives lately to um, uh, introduce a... a cycle or mountain bike tours around the island, which last a week. People come across. Uh, the hotels are at a, a lower cost price. Uh, the weather's cooler. So these kind of sports-related activities that can be done in the off-season help to drive the economy and to drive sales. Uh, the other thing that Immersius is doing to try and increase the tourist uh, arrivals is to target new markets. And uh, as of the 24th of January, uh, there's now two direct flights a week to uh, Shanghai. That we're bringing in direct flights to Beijing and to Moscow as well this year. Mm -hmm. And so, for example, the, the, the direct flights to Shanghai, uh, for the next three weeks, you cannot get a seat on those flights. So th th they're looking to expand the, uh, the, the, the tourist uh, catchment and but not just stick to the traditional markets of, say, South Africa uh, and continental Europe.